Here's a quick demonstration of using Minsky to build a simple economic model. I'll start with defining the variable of GDP. And if you know GDP, then if you know what labour productivity is, I'll call that LP, let's say one worker produces say two units of output, then if you divide GDP by labour productivity, you will have the level of employment. And once you know the level of employment, if you divide that by population, I'm using a simple idea of a constant population here and got the constant labour productivity too, just to speed the design process. So population there as well. Then you know the employment rate. Now Milton Friedman was fairly famous for saying that there was a thing he called the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And if you got the economy, if you left the economy alone and didn't let the unions or government intervene, the economy would set down to a nice, stable, equilibrium rate of growth with the unemployment rate at the Nehru rate. Well, that's, and, but if it was higher, if unemployment rate was uh, below the Nehru rate, there'd be in inflation, rising wages, rising prices, uh, below to be otherwise. Let's just quickly wire the first few bits of this up. So GDP divided by labour productivity is employment. Employment divided by population is the employment rate. Change back to mode, move mode here. And then if I subtract employment, the actual employment rate from the Nehru rate, I then have part of the rate of change at which wages are changing. So I'm then looking to get to include wages in this in this uh, process. So because that's the, the gap, I then multiply the gap by some response factor, which I'll call a, a Phillips, fill slope for the Phillips slope after John, uh, uh, Bill Phillips, and so that's uh, 10. So if there's a, if wages are 1%, if employment is 1% higher than the Nehru rate, uh, the rate of change of wages will be 10% higher. Then I've got to bring down a rate of change variable, which is this integral block we have here. We'll be making that a smoother thing to define in future. This is the wage. Let's say the wage starts at, say, 1.5 units per worker. Now, to make this into a rate of change equation, I've got to say the uh, rate of change of wages multiplied by the current level integrated is the wage level. So that whole expression here now has to be wired up. And I need to, first of all, to multiply the Phillips slope by the gap there, and then to multiply all that by wages. So let's bring another multiply block down. I started a bit close to the window here, but I can fix it up in a moment. So we just wire Phillips curve to there, and wire that to there, and now I've got the wage determined. And uh, I'm just going to drag this down here and flip it. So we start going around the other direction and curve that wire a bit. Okay, now I've got the wage. If I multiply the wage by the level of employment, of course, I then have the wage bill. And with the wage bill, if I subtract the wage bill from GDP, I can get what profit is. Let's get down here and do all this, uh, wire that up. So wages multiplied by the employment level uh, is the wage bill. Let's create another variable called wage bill. And if I then subtract the wage bill from GDP, that's going to give me a level of profit. And the simple model, I'm just going to say the capitalists invest all their profits. And investment, of course, is the rate of change of capital stocks. So if I bring another integrated variable here and call that capital, and let's say the initial capital stock is, say, 350 units, that around then from that I've got the level of capital. And now at the level of capital, if I divide the level of capital by the capital output ratio, which economists usually use the symbol of V for, uh, if I divide that uh, capital by V, I've now got 
level of GDP. Let's wire that up together. So I have wage bill coming out of here. I then, let's just, I can do this this way. And then let's just flip that block around. Wire that to profit. Profit becomes investment. Investment integrated as the capital stock. And then being run up a divide by block to divide uh, capital by the accelerator. And that is your GDP. So I've now closed the model. Now, according to Milton Friedman, of course, this should be a nice stable system. We should all get down to equilibrium. Well, let's just simulate it and see what happens. Make a bit of space to put a, a graph in the middle here. I bring a graph down. Let's wire up the level of wages and the level of the employment rate and graph them over here uh, against time. And they have another graph where I graph the wage rate against the employment rate on the horizontal axis. And wire all that up. Whoops. I'm going to delete that. Go back and move. And you see the little highlight there and a lot I can just right click. Let's move this around a bit. Right click and choose delete to delete the line and wire it where I meant to wire it. Bottom marker there. Okay. Equilibrium? I don't think so. Now that's a bit rough because I haven't set the runge cutter settings properly. It's a technical setting for the smoothness of the simulation. So I'll make it a smoother simulation. Stop it. Go back and start it again. And what you get is cycles indefinite cycles. Extreme numbers there, but just to give an illustration of what happens. So that's designing a standard dynamic systems model in Minsky.